Hello guys and welcome back. In this build video, we're gonna concentrate on building the 737 clock. Now this is gonna be quite a long video, I feel. There's a lot to do. Let's get started. First up is to put the heat insert tool onto the soldering iron. Let's get that nice and warm. And this time we're using both M3 and M4 brass inserts. So starting with M3 brass inserts, these are the ones that go right in the middle in these locations here. And we're gonna insert the tool, line them up and hopefully let them sink in. I've switched over to an M4 insert tool. The remainder are all M4 inserts. So we've got four on the top surface here. Now we've got to turn it over and put another four in on the opposite side. And that is the spacer body with all its brass inserts fitted. So there's quite a few in that one piece. Now we've got the stepper mount, and again, that's got a few in. One each of the big holes. And then we've got two in the middle. Now we need to turn the unit over and put another three in the top holes here on the outside. Now that the brass inserts are done, we can move on to the faceplate, and I've created three versions. I've created the 3D printed version that you just print by itself. Then we've got the flat plate version, which is laser etched, 3D printed back plate, and they go together like so. And they give you a nice, smooth looking finish. And then we've got my final version, which is the version I've created here. And this has got all the detailing around the buttons. It's also got the laser inserted plates. So I've got to make sure that I take the plastic off the back of the decals. There we go, there's the first one. And that is just gonna push in firmly into the plate, like so, that's number one. Let's do the lower one. And there we have the high detail clock front with laser etched and they're fully lightable and that's why there's so many holes in the back. We could bring in our spacer now. We've got our decal plate. That's just gonna go over the top. We've got our adapter plate. Looking for the single hole. That always goes in top left upper corner. I nearly said right then. Then we've got our lens, two millimeter per spec, that just slots in there. Then we've got our face plate. And to hold these assemblies together, I'm gonna to use M3 by 20 millimeter screws. There's one. There's two, good. So now it's a completely secure unit and we needed to build this first because this is gonna set the depth of all the electrical components that need to go into it. We can put our assembly to one side and pick up our PCB. Now, this does state uh, the Chrono version one. It's actually not, this is actually version 1.4. There's been four, there's been three other revisions before this, before I, I kind of got it right. I'm hoping this is gonna work now. But I'm not gonna know that until I've built it. So let's do this. So for this project, I'm gonna use yellow uh, seven digit displays. Uh, they're four digits long and they are common cathode. I'm gonna take the covers off, the protective film. Let's see what we got. Yeah, they look good. And we're just gonna slide them into the holes nice and easy. Now that was the first revision I made. I was making the holes bigger so they slotted in much easier. Going to place the assembly over the top. We're going to flip it upside down. We could bring in the soldering iron 
and solder all 24 legs. There's the seven segment displays now in the windows. You can pull it away and they are the exact height that they need to be. With the seven segments done, let's move on to the chip that goes here. You can see that the chip has got a little half moon cutout in one end and that half moon cutout follows this shape here. So they must match. Make sure I get it right. In it goes. Done. Now when I created these, I specifically stayed away from SMD, which is a little bit more difficult to do. And through hole is definitely a lot easier to solder without any specialist equipment. So you should find building these as easy as I can make it without actually having them pre-built, which would be very expensive. There we go, that's the chip on. And there's the legs all soldered up. So next we've got our 120 ohm resistors. Just gonna bend the legs over. And slide them into the holes. Now resistors can go either way around, it doesn't matter. However, I just like to have all the gold stripes facing one way. We can flip that over. I'm just going to spread the legs so it helps hold them in position. That's the three 120 ohm resistors fitted. Now we've got one that goes here, R1, and that sets the brightness of the displays. And I'm using a 12K resistor. Just going to turn it around so the gold band faces to the right. Bend the legs over and we'll get that soldered. Got this little disc cap. That's going to fit into this whole C1 here. And it is bi-directional so it's not polarity sensitive. Spread the legs and solder it in place. And then we've got our electrolytic cap. Now this is polarity sensitive and you can see the big minus arrows pointing to this leg here being the cathode. So the longer leg is the anode and that's just gonna slide into the positive side. There we go. Once again, bend the legs and solder it up. Next up we've got our tactile switches. It's going to line the legs up and then insert seven of these around the outer perimeter. There we go, one. And there is the tactile switches done. So next up we've got our LEDs, three millimeters. I'm using flat top ones. So these LEDs are polarity sensitive and hopefully you can see on camera that one leg is longer than the other. The long leg is the anode, the short leg is the cathode. To help identify that, there is a flat that you're probably not gonna see, but there's a flat on the unit here as well to identify the cathode. And that is what the flat is showing on the board. So short leg towards the flat, there's one. There's all our LEDs now loosely in position. We're gonna bring our face panel back in. We're gonna put it into position. And then we're gonna allow all the LEDs to fall down into their holes, like so. So they're all held in position. And we can just go around and solder all those at the correct height. A 
Okay, and once again, we can trim the legs. There's the back of the board so far. And of course, next up, we've got some header pins so we can connect our cables to them. So we can just solder these from the front side. Now that they're semi-secure, and as you can see there, they are not straight. So I can just heat the, the last pin up and bend them straight and move them straight. So those pins look pretty straight from here. We can flip it over and solder the remaining legs. We've done our LEDs for the faceplate here, but we need to light the decal plate. And for that, we've got to disassemble it. There we go. Just so we can take the spacer plate off. And we're gonna fit LED strip all around the inside edge. Get the scissors out, cut it on the line. Now we've got our LED strip placed all around the edges. And we'll put in two spots on the LED strip. There's one. There's two. So now we can attach our spacer to the PCB permanently. And we do that with a couple of screws in the corner. There's one, two. So we'll do the negative cable first. I'm leaving the wire long in case we've got to take the PCB away from the spacer. Let's see if I can just fold it behind these switches to hold it in place. Ah, perfect. See if we can do the same with the positive. And then we can solder these cables to the two points. Give them a trim to tidy them up. And I think that is the PCB fully finished, ready to go. I think we better test the LEDs to make sure everything works. So brown, pin one is negative 12. Pin next to it is positive 12. Oh, that's good. So that all works. We can put the case on. Oh, I can see that's working already. I hope you can see how well that's lit up, but that is working exceptionally well. With our PCB done, we can now concentrate on the back part of the gauge, which is the stepper motor. We've got our stepper motor mount that we created earlier with the heat inserts. First thing we're gonna need is our ultra mini micro switch. Once we've got, there we go, got them located, they should go in. There's one. There's two. So now that we've fitted our micro switch, we need to attach two cables. And this is gonna tell the gauge, go tell Mobiflight, where the zero point of the gauge is, so you don't have to keep calibrating it. It always knows where zero is. So I'm just gonna tin the wires. Let's get those quickly on there, yep. Solder the pins. Now I don't know which pins I need yet. I'm gonna to have to look on the back. There we go. Let's take a bit of excess off there. So I'll put a bit of heat shrink on. Get the soldering iron and we can attach it to the legs. So this is the normally open pin. That's that one done. On goes the heat shrink. And this is the com pin. Done. Bring in the mini heat gun. Now we get to fit our stepper motor and that just fits in the back. We can turn it over. We can put in the activation cam and is actually keyed. So it can only go on one way or it locks it in position. And as it turns round and hits the, the zero position, you can see there that it's pushing the micro switch. 
Okay guys, so I've put the micro switch on upside down, which I need to correct. So out come the screws, we're gonna turn it round. Okay, so there's the micro switch fitted, hopefully in the correct position. So as the stepper motor drives round to the zero position, it makes contact with the micro switch and now it does. There you go, I don't know if you can hear that. Then we need our three millimeter shaft. Now this is designed to be a tight fit. I'm just gonna pull it off and give it a little tap. We can bring in our PCB assembly, slide it over the hole, and then insert some M4 screws to hold it into place. Now we can apply our button caps, and there are seven of these. They go around the outside edge on all the tactile switches. There we go. On goes our decal plate. Now I nearly did forget the needle. That definitely needs to go on. Then we've got our outer case, which is just gonna slide over the top. And we really are getting close to finishing the, uh, the whole assembly now. It looks absolutely fantastic. So on the back side, we've got this stepper motor control board. This is gonna help support that board in place. And it's just held in place with a few M4 screws. Two. Three. And this is the stepper motor control board that came with the stepper motor. And it's just gonna slide in the slots here. Yep. And we've got a stepper motor cable. That can get connected there. This cable here is a bit long and it looks a bit messy, so let's tidy it up, ready for fitment to the panel. Just gonna loop it round on itself a bit, and then use some lacing cord to hold it in position. So the clock should mount from the rear. Oh, at least it fits, that's a huge relief. And we've just got the four screws on the outside. I'm just checking the buttons to make sure that they all do push and they're not, they're not binding or anything and everything seems okay. Okay guys, so I've taken the lens and the front cover off. That allows us access to the needle. The needle's just loosely in and I can move it anywhere I want. So I'm just gonna move it to the 60 second position and I'm gonna tighten that up in there. So here we are sat at the computer. I'm gonna try and make this as painless as possible because I have done this programming so many times with you guys in different videos. I'm using ProSim. So you can see that we've got the ProSim display here on the right hand side of the screen. And next to it, we've got uh, Mobile Flight. Now just off screen on my other monitor, we've got Microsoft Flight Simulator running in the background with FSU IPC7. First thing we need to do is we need to tell Mobifly what we've got attached to what pins and what devices we've got. So the first device I'm gonna add is the LED seven segment. And to keep things simple, I actually have used those pins. Nice and easy. Uh, let's do that. Okay, next one is gonna be, we need to add the buttons. Now buttons are pins five to 11. So I'm just gonna add a button, pins five, add device, and do this several times until we get to pin 12. Pin 11, perfect, so button six is pin 11. I'm gonna add the stepper now. 
add device, and that's the stepper driver. And my stepper is, okay, so my stepper is pins 14, 15, 16, and 17. I've just got to move those off the 14s and 15s so I can use them in different places. So I've just picked any numbers for the time being. Now for pin one, I can select the first pin, which is 14, second pin, which is 15, third pin, which is 16, obviously. Pin four is 17. Our zero, because we've got that micro switch on and it's connected to pin 12, we're actually gonna select it as pin 12, which it already is, that's cool, that's nice and easy. And I'm not gonna forget to press the upload button before I push okay, here we go. Well, that was nice and quick. Now that's all the devices programmed. So the very first thing, let's get the LEDs light up. So I'm just gonna put the first command in as test, uh, test LED to make sure that our connections work. Edit the combat, edit the uh, config line, sorry. Little bit sluggish at the moment. Okay, so we're gonna go into display going to select the display module. I'm going to highlight all the numbers. I am going to reverse the digits because it's my custom PCB. I shouldn't have tapped the mic there. Sorry, guys. And I'm going to hit test. And hopefully... Oh, <laughs> first time. Love PCBs. Normally, if I've wired it myself using lots of wires, I'd have the odd segment out. But that is working fine. Phew. This is so simple now with PCBs. Okay, uh, what we can actually do is close that. And I'm gonna change this to, let's do the upper left hand, because that's showing 20. So, uh, upper left hand, I was gonna call it UL, um, upper left hand LED, okay. I'm gonna edit the line. Oh, it is a bit sluggish. Okay, so FSUIPC, my offset for upper left is 66 Charlie 4. And it's two sizes in bytes. So we're using 66 Charlie 4 and 66 Charlie 5. So that's eight bytes in total. That's actually 16, 16 bits or two bytes. Sorry. Oh, it's been a while since I've done this. Okay. Yeah, that's all correct. Display. And for the upper left hand, it's seven and eight. So, oh, seven and eight. That's good, that's good. It is reversed. So let's go test. I've got seven and eight, that's good, yes. Stop, hit okay. All we've got to do now is hit run. We've got 20 shown as the flight sim value. The output value is 20. So you can see on the clock it's showing 20 and actually on the display is 20. Boom. Okay, what I can do now is duplicate this line and we'll call this the upper right LED. Edit the line. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Let's go back to the sim variable because it's a set of a different set of digits. The, byte in, the bytes in size is the same. It's always gonna be two for numbers, for the, the clock numbers. And the offset we're gonna use for the upper right hand is C6. That should be good. Over to display, and the digits are five and six. Get rid of the seven and eight. Hit okay. Good, so that's now showing 52. That is coming from ProSim, 2052. Let's hit run. Oh, it's, all, it's already running in the background and it's showing 2052. Whew. I'm gonna duplicate the line again. This time I'm gonna label this LL for lower left digits. Let's get rid of some of these copies otherwise they're gonna go right across the screen in a minute. Edit, back to sim variable. And because this is the lower left hand, this is Charlie 2, and the display is 3 and 4, 3 and 4, good, hit OK, it's showing minus 1, okay, that's correct, 
So when ProSim doesn't want to show anything on the display like it's showing now, it puts a minus one value in. And we've got minus one on the clock. Now to hide that, we go back in, we go to sim, uh, do we go to sim variable? No, we don't, we go to compare, sorry. And we apply comparison, we go to equals, and we tell MobileFly that if it's got a value of minus one, I'm going to press the space bar twice. One, two. So you can't see anything in the, uh, in the programming line there, but it is two blank spaces. I'm gonna push okay, and now it's disappeared. So it's showing two blank spaces. It's just that you can't see it on screen. I'm gonna duplicate that line again. Guys, I really am trying to do this fast because programming is boring, especially when I'm trying to show you guys and there are so many more in-depth videos on my channel and on Mickey's Flight Deck on how to do this. But lower left, this is lower right now. I've duplicated the line, it's showing minus one, but that is the wrong figure we're taking. And uh, we need lower right. So back to sim variable, and that's C0. It's two bytes, and the display this time is digits one and two. Hit okay. Ah, okay. I forgot to tick left padding, so I'm just gonna go back through and tick left padding on those two lower ones. What that does is that it moves the number across one and inserts a zero. You'll see that in a second. Uh, I think we probably can go for a test. So now that they're programmed and it's showing zero, if I hit the chrono button, we should get zero on the display and we've got it counting on the actual clock. I love this part, it just looks so smart. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let me show you this next stage because this is where it gets really cool and we start getting that second hand to match. So we're gonna put a new line in and I'm just gonna label this the second hand. Second hand, there we go. Wait for it to load up. And this is gonna be, we're gonna take this from the lower right display I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see that on camera. Uh, here we go, I'll use the mouse, but that'll be much easier. So this is the lower right hand, so we need to copy the, the lower right hand digits, which is 66 Charlie zero. So we're gonna use the exact same offset as we used for the lower right hand digits, which is 66 Charlie zero. Of course, it's two bytes. It's FSU IPC. Display is now gonna be the stepper motor. Okay, sim settings. Well, there's only 60 seconds in a revolution of the clock, and it's already put us in that the 28 BYJ stepper motors have got 2040. I actually think it might be 2038 to be precise, but we'll give that a go. And if I hit okay, the needle should jump round and then follow the scale. I love it. It's just mesmerizing now where you can watch the digital and the uh, second hand match in perfect harmony. And it was so simple. There we go, that's doing its stuff. So if I hit the chrono button on the display here, it should stop the clock and the second hand. If I push it again, it should go back to zero. Okay, now I already know that I've forgotten something, and if I'd let it go those extra five seconds, I could have uh, shown you. So I'm gonna start the stop clock again to show you exactly what happens, because it's not gonna like this. I've missed a, a very important value out. And uh, luckily enough, you're not gonna have to wait like me. I'll just do the video editing and you can catch up. Okay guys, we've got 13 seconds to go now, and to 10. What's gonna happen is, because I haven't got to set this to compass mode, we're gonna to get to 16. We're probably gonna find that the needle is gonna shoot back the other way, back to zero. There it goes. And it'll continue. Okay, so what we've gotta do there is go back into the settings, which is, yep, the stepper motor. It's the stepper motor that I need to change. Ah, it's right there in front of me. Compass mode enabled. And now, if I can cheat, let me just reset it. Go again. When it gets to the 60 mark, it should go through this time rather than back round. Okay, so here we go, five seconds to go, and this time it should go through, and it does. Brilliant. So that is the outputs done. 
I'm going to stop the clock, reset it. I'm going to head over to the clock now and rebuild it completely because that is the needle set. And with the face on, now we can put the backlighting on because it's not the camera shouldn't bloom out on it. Here we go. <laughs> How cool. That's all the outputs done. The clock is looking fantastic. Let's do those buttons so we can play around with it. Into input configs. In fact, what I'm going to do is you can see at the base here, I've got it in log mode so we can see what it's doing. And I'm just going to push the button, chrono, and that tells me it is the button. It's just button. I'm just going to write that down. Time and date. Time and date is button six. Set is five. Uh, the first one we'll do then is the positive button. Edit the line. It, it's going to be that. And it's going to be positive is button two for me. There we go. So action type on press is FSUIPC offset. And it is 66 six, Charlie 8. 66 six, Charlie 8. Okay, this time it's only one byte because it's just a single bit that we want. I'm going to hide the mask and I'm going to deselect everything but 0. 0.0. So we're just using that single bit in the byte. Phew. Here we go. Done. Set value, one, okay. I'm a bit rusty. Uh, I don't think we need to do the on release. So hit okay. I'm gonna duplicate that line. Next is minus, edit the line. This is mask value one, dink, dink. And it is button three. Yeah, okay. Now, because I changed the, the button, the device, before I did the mask, I did the mask before I did the button, sorry, it doesn't work. So I've got to change the one again. Hit OK. I think that should work completely. Yes, it will. So I've just realized that we've got the minus one value in the stepper, which I think, yes, is now showing 59, 59 seconds rather than 50. Yeah, then 60 or zero. I'm just going to edit that, go to compare, and just like we did with the seconds value, we're going to hit equals. This time we're going to hit, when it reads minus one, we're going to set it to zero. Hit OK. That's better. Good. Mobile flight is running. Now that I've programmed all the buttons, yeah. They don't work on screen anymore because they've been programmed in ProSim. Let's go over to the device and play with it with our actual fingers. So as I said earlier, if we push the chrono button once, the stopwatch should start. There it goes, second hand matches. Push it once more, it stops the chrono and we can reset it. There we go. So now if we push the time date, it should flick to 16th of the 5th. 2023, 17th, 18th, so we can adjust it with the plus and minus buttons. I'm going to reset it and then, yeah, wow, we don't need, that's pretty cool. Back to time and date, reset, ET. Okay, guys, there we have it. One very simple clock to make. The PCB does make all the difference. It takes all that hard work about wiring those seven segments up and splitting them over the two displays. You can see that I've used yellow and that's because I just couldn't find white LED seven segment displays out on the market just yet. Didn't really try that hard. And I didn't want to use red because red is boring. You get them everywhere. But there's nothing wrong with using red because it's nice and cheap and they actually do come with those displays. Backlighting works well. Really think that that's this, that's it done for this project. 
The fact that the second hand is uh, just in sync all the time, I absolutely love that. It's just amazing to watch, knowing that you've created something like that. Not only have you done the digital displays, but you've managed to get the analog stepper working in sync with the display. Until next time, guys, sim out.